Hi friends. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and today's video. So the Swedish word of the day is Do you want candy? Which is the Swedish Vill du ha godis? Vill du ha godis? We have this little treat on Duke the Gile. Varsågod. Hope you enjoyed that little snippet of Sigge. I need to put up my hair. Today I am going to do a little makeup tutorial and I want to use this palette. You guys have been asking about this palette and if I could do a little look with it. So of course I am going to. This is from LA Girl and this is their Pro Mystery Eyeshadow Palette. They have, no, Mastery. Sorry, not mystery, mastery palette. And they have the Pro Artistry palette as well. I'll have a picture on it right here. And then I can show you a look that I have done with it. I filmed an Instagram tutorial that I can link down below in case you wanted to see it. I'm just gonna turn off the audience audio here. That palette intrigued me way more, but then I have been very into like the rosier, a little bit more neutral tones. So I wanted to play with this one. This contains 16 shadows, and I'm gonna show it to you, like a ginormous mirror, 16 shadows. There you can see my brushes. Uh, seven shimmers and nine mattes. You do get this plastic sheet that tells you all the names, but you, you do have them in the back as well. So this is very easy to see how to use them. I was sent both of the palettes in PR from LA Girl Nordics. So I just wanted to say that so you guys are aware of that. This palette contains 35 grams, which I counted out last night was like over two grams per uh, shadow. And just for reference, an Anastasia Belva Hills palette contains less than one gram. So you get a lot of product. The palette is very, very affordable. I will link it down below to Beauty Bay and to Lyko, which is a Swedish website. I have started working a little bit more with them. So if you do want to use my links, I will earn a small commission. But that is basically the only way that I can do these videos in order for the companies to want to work with me. So I am going to start off with the Kaleidos S1 brush and I'm gonna take this shadow right here which is called Aficanado. Yeah, I'm just gonna set my eyeshadow primer. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit more. We're just gonna set right here which I normally do. This is just to make sure that my eyeshadow primer doesn't stick here. No, that my mascara doesn't stick here, I'm sorry. So previous to this, I have done a halo eye and then just a normal eyeshadow look. I'll have them on the screen. I post all of my looks on Instagram, as you guys know. If you wanted to see a little bit more of the looks and what I wear to an everyday, you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm not gonna say the shade names anymore because oh, who cares? This is the shade I am going to use. You can see which shade it is. Tapping my brush off and then we are going to take this in our crease. I might take another shade just to blend it out so I'm putting this in my actual crease. And this is so strange but I have a little patch right here. I've had it for months. So if anyone knows why I have it or how I can get rid of it, please let me know because it just came out of nowhere. Oh, and this palette is very affordable. It costs 200 Swedish krones, and then on Beauty Bay, let me see here, it costs 200 Swedish krones as well. So maybe that is like 20 pounds or something? No, uh, dollars. And then it's probably a little bit more affordable in the US. Then I'm gonna take a mix of these two, I think. So we're just doing like that tapping it off and then I'm just gonna blend it out right here. So I'm blending upwards a little bit. So this is the third time I'm using this palette and what I will say is that I think it's great. Um, however, I feel like it is drugstore quality when it comes to the mattes. I'm not, I think that the mattes are good. It's just that they are taking a bit more time to blend out and they are looking a little bit drier. Sometimes when you get high-end shadows, you can kind of tell that they look a little bit smoother 
Um, these look a little bit drier and they also feel a little bit drier and almost a little bit more looser. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't contain too much kick up, which is nice. But the shimmers is what really makes these palettes. They, these shimmers are incredible. They are a little bit flaky, but they are so good. Now I'm gonna take the, this beautiful deep shade. <laughs> I'm the worst at describing colors. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm sitting here, it's like a new background. I sit here from time to time when, or on the weekends when Nicholas is sleeping longer than me because I don't feel like I want to wait for him to wake up and then I need to go in there and film and then the clock turns so much. I would, I like to film in the mornings when I get up and I can just do my makeup right away. That's how I usually do it. If I wouldn't film, I would do it like right away. One thing I will say with this palette is like, I feel like I do the same look. I feel like you, um, you will get very similar looks with this palette, but let's take something and try and make it a bit different. I'm just gonna swatch some shadows here. Okay, I'm gonna take this shimmer right here and I'm taking this on a flat brush. You don't wanna take too much and you wanna tap it off because, oh, fuck. Again, these uh, shimmers are pretty thick so you will get a lot of product on them, but they are incredible when you get them on the eye. I mean, do you see that? They are so beautiful. If I weren't filming a makeup tutorial, I would probably have done something like a lighter shimmer, but I felt like that was too similar to the looks that I already done. So we're going a little bit deeper today. But I wanna fix this because it's not looking too good. I think I'm gonna take, oh, I really love this shadow actually. So I'm gonna take that one, just dip my brush in it, and then we're gonna just blend. to wash my hands and the ugh. the worst thing about this palette is that I feel like you know I can't see it now but I saw it in my bathroom mirror and it is that I put down the deepest shadow here or the darkest shadow here and I have a line right here and I hate that and I cannot blend it out same thing here and there are I feel like there are a few things like you can't really sheer it out too too much so I would I don't hate this palette. I actually really, really like this palette, but I want to say that you should probably, if you are going to purchase this, um, go in with a little bit less shadow than too much shadow in the beginning. I'm going to use my Milani Soft Glow Primer. This is supposed to give like a very luminous touch to the skin. Did I even explain why I was sitting here? Nicholas is sleeping and I put everything up last night because I knew that I'm I'm always going up before him. And so I thought that I would just film because as I said, otherwise the day goes and then I don't want to film because I'm like, uh, no. So I just put down a little bit of my Becca concealer and then I am going to go in with the pretty fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer from ColourPop and the foundation from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I have this in the shade 5N Light and I have this in the shade 220N. So I'm just gonna put this down on my skin. The Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation, I freaking hate the pump and I also, like it's too dark for me. I was... I was <laughs> I was thinking that I shouldn't put it in my shop my stash, but I thought that I would do it anyway. First, I thought that maybe I should wait until the summer comes, but I realized that I'm not really sure that I want to use a lot of foundation during things during the summer. So I thought that I could put down my um, or put in my 
tinted moisturizer as well just to sheer it out a little bit and then we get to deepen this up with bronzer i don't know if it's just me but i feel like this foundation oxidizes on me mm, i don't know anyway let's continue i'm gonna take my milk makeup bronzer <sighs> you know i want to talk about something so as I've said so many times, I feel so sorry that I'm just repeating myself all the time and you just have to listen to me say the same thing over and over again. But again, I want to downsize my makeup collection a lot this year, which is why I'm trying to be very critical when I'm thinking and I'm trying to be very critical when it comes to like purchasing makeup like is this something I need or is it something I can do because a lot of the times it's just the new, the hip that you want. And a lot of the times you can just, if you just wait a week or two, it kind of just goes away. The problem I have is that when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I have, as I've said, I think I have around like 120, 115 eyeshadow palettes, somewhere along those lines, maybe even 130. I'm not really sure, but it is too many because if I were to use everyone once i would get to use them three times a year and that's too little to me and there are a ton of palettes that i don't use obviously i keep some palettes for like youtube purposes like my natasha denona gold dupe palette from w7 i want to keep that just for dupe purposes but when it comes to makeup tutorials and such i would use my natasha palette over my w7 palette unless you wanted me to do another look with it. But you you know what I mean. So that's like one thing. And I, I'm fine with keeping palettes like that because I am on YouTube and I have an audience or how to say it. So I'm fine with that. But the problem I have that I find it so hard and difficult right now to declutter uh, makeup. I have certain things that I don't like and that's super easy to get rid of but when it comes to makeup that I'm like a little bit unsure about I just I have the hardest time getting rid of it and I don't know why so I just applied a little bit of my Tarte Shape Tape uh, I'm not gonna take any more of this I'm gonna take my Makeup Revolution Concealer in the shade 10.2 this is almost all gone and I'm just taking this right here. As you can see, it's way darker, but that is because of the fact that the Tarte Shape Tape is too light for me. So yeah, I just, I don't know what it is and why I'm feeling like this and why I feel like I can't declutter shit. There's so much that I'm like, oh, but what if I need it one day? Or what if I'm regretting it? And I have decluttered a lot of makeup throughout the years and there is probably only one product that I have regretted that I decluttered and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild palette. Today I'm fine. Today I don't really care but I was really sad about it during a point in or during a period in my life. Like sad, that's dramatic but you know what I mean like oh damn it I shouldn't have decluttered it. It, it was still available to purchase. I don't know if they it's still available for purchasing but it was at the time when I regretted it, but I didn't regret it enough to want to repurchase it. And I know that a lot of people actually does that, especially like in the US, because you can return makeup that some people buy shit on launch date and then they try it and they are like, oh, no, I didn't like this. And then they return it and then everyone, maybe everyone starts raving about that product and they regret it. So they buy it again which is just, it's so wasteful. I saw a vlog the other day from a woman that lives in the US and she was talking to her friend that she wasn't sure if she wanted to keep this palette, it was like a highlight palette. Um, she was a little bit unsure and she was like, I don't know why I bought it. And then she started swatching it and she was like, yeah, I might return this. And I was like, why did you even swatch it then? They could have sold it if you didn't swatch it, but not now. Now I'm just taking my Too Faced uh, Peach Perfect Powder in translucent and I'm just gonna set under my eyes. Is it this pink one that is turning the light super pink? I'm so sorry. A palette that I'm thinking about decluttering is the Morphe 39. Is it 
A palette. I only have 139 palette. I never reach for it because it's way too big. I have it in a drawer. I was thinking that I should should have taken that palette in my chopping block video when I did my shop my stash, but I completely forgot. But in this rotation, I have the ABH Riviera palette and I need to decide if I'm gonna keep it or not. But at this rate that I'm going in, I'm keeping it all. I'm just gonna do my under eyes and my mascara. I'm gonna do it really simple under my eyes. I'm just gonna take the shade that we took in our outer V under my eyes and then blend it out with like the peach color that we used and I'll be right back. So I'm actually gonna do a slight contour today and I'm gonna use my Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade 02. And I'm just gonna use my Sigma F40 brush. I do have a code with Sigma if you wanna use it. Now that the Cord Rosa palette came out, I talked a little bit more about my code and no one has used my code for like, I don't even know, maybe a year? No, months anyway. And now two people had, because I can, I can see, and I was so happy I, I did a little dance. <laughs> I'm just taking this around my face. I will go in with my normal bronzer as well. My Project Pan bronzer. A little bit on the nose, like this. And then I'm gonna take my Too Faced. Ugh, I was trying to look at the back, but yeah. You can see jack shit in the back, but it is the Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. And then I'm just gonna apply it here. Just a little bit on top. I mean, using three bronzers, why not? I know that some of you guys that follow me never declutters, but how do you feel? Like some of you guys, are you, what are your goal right now? Like, is it just to spend money? Um, and not really think about it? Or are you uh, trying to buy one product a month? Or are you on a no buy? Like what's the situation? And how is your collection looking? Because a lot of the times, you guys know a, a lot about my collection, but I rarely get to hear about your people's collection. Like do you have 50 foundations and two eyeshadow palettes? Or do you have like, yeah, what's the situation? Okay, I don't know how I feel about this color, but I will use this for blush today. I took my Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. I have this shade Melon and Pinched, and I took mostly Pinched. Usually I take more of Melon, but now I took mostly Pinched and I added in just a tad of the shade Melon, and this is the shade we got. So I'm just gonna apply this to my skin. I've come to realize, because a lot of you guys, you guys know I love creams and everything and I love it, but I have come to realize that I prefer a cream blush over a liquid blush. Because I feel like a liquid blush is a little bit too much work and sometimes you kind of have to, uh, it takes a little bit more time in the morning, like right now it really doesn't matter. Uh, but in the mornings, you know, when you're a little bit stressed, you don't want to sit and mix and blend your... Um, blush and everything so I don't know but uh, I do prefer the cream ones like the milk makeup ones or the nude sticks ones I love those but I, I, I love a cream as well because they're so dewy and nice I'm gonna take my Fenty highlight in the shade what a brat and I am gonna take this in my inner corner oh we have a mirror here so we can use this you always pick me up when I'm gonna use it on my cheeks as well, but I wanna take my Anastasia um, Amarisi highlight first, and I'm gonna take this as a base, and then I wanna go in with Waterbrad, because I feel like if I only go in with that, it's gonna be a little bit too intense. So we're just doing like this. I really like this one, and I feel like you get so much um, product because you don't get any kick up or anything like if you have the Joe Citrine highlight you guys know how much kick up that has which means that you will go through it a little bit quicker but this one is just no kick up nothing so you won't waste any product 
Now I'm just taking off like the excess and I'm just going to blend it out so that it isn't as sharp and as like a little stripe. And then I'm gonna take the same brush and we're gonna hop it, we're gonna hop into the Fenty highlight and I'm gonna tap it off and then I'm gonna apply just a little bit first and then we can build it if we want to. So I actually tried out a lip color that didn't really go with this look. So I'm gonna take my ColourPop Luxe lipstick in the shade Tiptoe instead. Lastly, I'm finishing it off with my Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. Okay, so this is the finished look. I slept with these like TikTok curls that has been going on and it only works on me if I have damp hair. If I don't have it, it doesn't really work. The problem is that you guys know I have curly hair, so I get a lot of frizz because you know the shorter hair right here doesn't get into the battle. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this is the final look. I'm looking in the viewfinder, sorry. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. So I think that this palette is totally worth the money. As I said, like this is 200 Swedish crones, which is maybe around like the $20 mark. And that might seem high for a drugstore product for someone in the US. But keep in mind, like the, the palettes that you rave about from, for instance, Milani, the, you know which ones I mean, they are $45 here. So $20 for drugstore palette isn't a lot in Sweden anyway. So my battery is ticking. I need to change it. But yeah, this is the finished look. I like it. Um, I think that the palette is definitely worth the money. So if you do want to buy it, then do so. But try and shop your stash first. Uh, I have links to everything that I've used in my description box and they are affiliate links. If you want to use them, some are affiliate links, not all of them. Uh, but if you want to use my codes, I really, really appreciate it. You are supporting me and I love you for that. Don't forget to thumbs this video up if you liked it. If you did not enjoy it, give this video a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.